everyone, this is XK Generations, and welcome to one of the most anticipated videos I've made since Rewind 2021. Last year, I made a video on ranking every Sky season from Gratitude to Remembrance, which took way too long to make, hence it being a 28 minute video. If you haven't watched that video yet, I recommend watching it first before you give this video a watch to gain more context behind the original ranking. There was a lot of feedback in that video about what I thought of the newer seasons and that I should do a sequel, and this is what I'm going to be doing in this video where I rank the new seasons that I did not talk about in that first video. These five seasons which I did not talk about include the seasons of Remembrance, Passage, Moments, Revival and Nine Coloured Deer. Any season after Nine Coloured Deer I will not be able to talk about as this will be set in the near future from when this video is being written in January of 2024. And if this video does well I may even make another one of these videos when more seasons get released. Speaking of which, if you want to get notified on the next video, feel free to hit the subscribe button. As of writing this script, we are so close to hitting 2,000 subscribers. So if you want to help with getting that milestone, uh, please hit the subscribe button. There's only a small um, percentage of you guys that actually subscribe, so please subscribe if you can. And finally, I just want to mention that this video mainly reflects my own personal thoughts and opinions. So please don't go and have a mental breakdown because I called your favourite season mid. So with all that information said, let's jump straight into the first season, which is Season of Remembrance. Now, you guys may probably be wondering, XK, didn't you already rank Season of Remembrance? Which my answer to that is, yes, I did. However, I had ranked this when this season had only been released a few weeks before writing the script. When I had originally ranked this, I put this season 12 out of 16, which I thought was quite fair given the circumstances of the season not being completed entirely, and maybe Maybe it could have redeemed itself with better content later in the season. However, it did not. And this season, in my opinion, is one of the worst seasons in Sky's four and a half year history. Now, I do feel like there's a lot of reasons why I think this season ended up being so bad. One of the first reasons is that I think that game company were mainly focusing on the Aurora concert and season, which ended up being one of the best Sky seasons due to how cool the concert was. I think when this season came out, I think a lot of people had high expectations about this season, saying that this season would only get better. However, I think it went dramatically downhill from here. This season, thinking of it now, had absolutely nothing to offer new into the game and felt so generic and boring. I feel like the location it was based around felt like a more boring version of the season of performances area, with not that much content or space to work around. I do feel like the space in performance does have more content and stuff to do after the season, especially with the music shop or Harmony Hall in the Hermit Village. Remembrance, however, doesn't really have any other content after the season's completion. It's kind of just an area and that's it. Nothing new brought into the game or anything that had any interest to me. I think the worst part about this season, in my opinion, has to be the quests, which felt super repetitive, especially when having to decorate certain areas, which was a main gimmick with this season and collecting certain items from Vault. As stated before, I did not like the emotes that much, but did like the tiptoe emote, and that opinion hasn't changed. I still really like the addition of that emote, and it's nice that we got another traversal emote, but the other emotes were quite depressing, which was kind of matched along with the theme of the season also being very depressing. The cosmetics I also stated seem to be very copy pasted from other seasons, another statement which I still stand by as I only liked one of the hairstyles in the season of Remembrance. Overall, as stated before, I think this was one of the worst seasons in Sky. The lack of content, over repetitiveness and overall the season being generally boring. Uh, I would rank this season just above Shattering, mainly because this season at least has some content, unlike Shattering, which has absolutely nothing apart from the Shard quests. So I'm going to rank this above the season of Shattering, but I don't think this season was as good as Flight, as I actually recently completed all of the seasonal quests for that season, and I found Flight a little bit more enjoyable than the Season of Remembrance. So at the moment, on the ranking, this is the second second to worst sky season on the list. Wow, great start to the video. I hope it doesn't go downhill from here. Okay, so the next season after Remembrance is the Season of Passage. 
mid. Okay, so before we have a go at me, I do want to mention that I did actually like a lot of aspects about this season. The problem is a lot of these issues were ruined by the invention of Festival Tech, an absolutely horrible opening couple of days for the season ridiculed with bugs and glitches leading to sometimes even limited access to the seasonal area. Passage was released at the start of April with quite a lot of hype around it due to the fact it was going to include Festival Tech. For people who don't know, Festival Tech is a technology that is used to create the effect of having thousands of people in one super server, primarily created for the Aurora concert to fill an entire stadium full of players to create a more concert-like effect in Sky. I think around this time was when TGC were trying to invent brand new ways to bring Festival Tech into other aspects of the game, with this season featuring the technology heavily. The entire area is meant to be in a nighttime version of Isle of Dawn. At first, I did not like the retextured place as it felt a little bit too similar to the Little Prince area. However, I do feel like the decision to have the season in a retextured aisle is justified. Remember that stone ramp thing in aisle that's just used to be there for some reason? Now it has a purpose, thanks to the lore that this season has given it. First of all, I want to talk about the main stuff which I liked about this season, which mainly consisted of the spirits. I think for the first time in a while I had actually been interested in the cosmetics of this season, mainly because they were focusing on different cosmetic styles which I would liked and they all had a really cool vibe to them. Also I love the emotes too and they are super cool. Want to traverse sky by rolling on the floor? Well now you can with the traversal somersault emote. Want to turn into prime Cristiano Ronaldo and practice your ball control? Well now you can do keepy uppies with the hacky sack emote. Are you depressed because sky hasn't given you any decent updates since the Aurora concert. Now you can show that you are depressed with the moping emote. Want to get them gains and work out your Sky Kid more? Well now you can do pull ups in Sky. I loved all of the emotes that they added in as they are all unique in their own ways. Another reason which I loved about this season was the cosmetics that were on offer at this time. This season had, in my opinion, some cosmetics that I was very interested in. For example, the overactive overachiever spirit cape is now one of my main capes I actually wear on my Sky Kid, mainly due to its simplicity and it looks cool with my outfit. I also love how the Tanuki Cape Tail looks as it's so quirky and is probably the most unique cape in the entire game. Uh, I also love the hairstyles but wasn't able to get any of them sadly as they were all locked behind the adventure paths which personally was a bummer but uh, I would have really liked to see some of the hairstyles be free in this season even if it's just one or two of my least favourite hairstyles. One of the main aspects of this season is there is a heavy emphasis on the masks in the season. I really like the designs of them as they all had this kind of Zelda Majora's Mask kind of vibe to them, especially with the floating masks which kind of remind me of the Korok mask designs. I loved how the themes of the quest revolved around the different masks and the lore in this season was superb. However, the actual seasonal quests themselves... Uh, yeah, they were they were very bad. These seasonal quests were conducted so poorly and I have no idea what on earth TGC devs were smoking when they thought of implementing quests with festival tech. The first quest isn't too much of a problem with this due to it being set in an actual massive area of Isle and collecting these cauldron things. However, the second quest in this season is the most hectic quest I've ever completed in my life. For this quest, you have to go to Hidden Forest and then meditate where the mask tells you to go. Then when getting there and meditating, you'll be shoved into a festival tech lobby and told to wait for up to 15 minutes. Something which I really don't like because if you're a couple seconds late to joining, you may have to wait a considerable amount of time until you would be able to complete the quest. And the quest itself at the peak of the season's popularity, you could barely see where you were going due to being crushed to death by the festival tech spirits. At some points, the quest access points got narrow and even became practically unplayable due to this. The third quest luckily was not as bad as you wouldn't have to go through any narrow paths. However, the festival tech problem still consisted and it did ruin the entire experience for me. Uh, after the quest, I did not play any of the other quests until well after the season had ended, which did feel not not as fulfilling because these quests were built with more than 10 players in mind due to the festival tech but it did feel a lot
lot less in your face, if you get what I mean. So overall, I thought this season was mid. There are a lot of parts about this season which were thoroughly enjoyable and were unique in their own way. A breath of fresh air from the previous garbage season. However, I thought this was completely ruined by the festival tech and the technical glitches and bugs. And also before people tell me this ain't mid, I can tell the parts that are good and bad okay. I know what the feeling and definition of mid is. I support Crystal Palace Football Club. I have embraced the mid. I was born in the mid. And I don't mean Birmingham. Our history is mid. And I don't mean Tottenham going on trophyless runs. And we are the definition of being mid. But at least we're better than £1 billion Chelsea. In this ranking list, I think this season will be around the same level as Abyss. Another season which had a lot of hype in my opinion, but there were just some aspects which I did not like about this season. So I would put it around here and also in the original ranking, I put it as literally mid, like literally in the middle. So yeah, I, I think this season was uh, be around that kind of same place. Okay, so up next we have Season of Moments. When I first heard that we were finally getting a brand new season in Prairie, I knew from that point that TGC were cooking something tasty. The last season that was set in Prairie was Sanctuary, which in the original ranking video I'd put as the number one best guy season of all time. So this season of moments had some big shoes to fill. I was quite intrigued by the first season of Moments teasers trailer too, as Moments will be set in the Prairie Caves area. This area has kinda been a nothing for a while now, and this new season should bring brand new life into that Prairie Caves area. Also, I would like to mention that this is the first season since Abyss that we've had a brand new large seasonal area. So that's another positive, as TGC seem to be putting a lot more effort into this season than seasons such as Remembrance or Passage. From just looking at the teaser trailer, there are so many positives. Having a large seasonal area, a prairie setting, fun emotes, and a compelling story and cool lore. Oh boy, I wonder what else they could be adding in already into this insanely good sounding season. Oh my god, they're adding a camera. Okay, so as a Sky YouTuber myself, this brand new camera feature is massive news and will allow creators to enhance their content even more. The camera has three different modes, including a POV mode, which is good if you want to take scenery photos, a selfie mode, which you can use to take photos of yourself, and a tripod mode where you can stand your camera somewhere and take a photo from wherever really. There are also other modes with the camera too, including customization of zoom, brightness and focus. The camera mode with all of these features is literally a Sky Instagram user's wet dream. Plus, you can record using the camera feature on mobile devices which allows for some really cool cinematography and short films. Some really good examples which I want to recommend watching include videos made by Definitely Not B, Blue Sky COTL and Momo Sky which have all done some really unique things with the camera. I'll link some of these video examples in the description below as I definitely recommend watching them all. Plus, I'm actually featured in the one by Blue so definitely go and watch that one. Another reason why this season I thought was brilliant is the entirely new large seasonal area in the game. The first that we've had for a very long time, I think the last one was uh, Abyss I believe, um, that we had one that's like this big. Uh, I think this is probably the best new seasonal area which we have gotten since the Little Prince season. There are loads of different little places in the new area with loads of detail put into them such as the multiple different caves, the mountain there which I believe is one of the highest points you can get to in the entire game. And I love the caves with the crystallized lighting which was the first place I went to when going to this area. Other aspects which I loved about this season include the really fun emotes including the brand new friendship emote which was super cute. I always love seeing these new friendship emotes get added as it's quite rare for them to be added in new seasons these days. More customization options for cosmetics allowing for shorts and shoes to be worn. The first shoes that were able to be worn include the boots from the assembly and the new shoes from Moments and later in the season we had the XK shoes. Yes, I have my own merch in the game and that is totally not $10. Although I don't normally buy in-app purchases, this was a one-off because they're literally my own shoe brand. For goodness sake, I had to buy them. 
them. Now, although this season might sound perfect, there were quite a few things that hindered this season from perfection. The first is that after the seasonal quests are completed and grabbing the camera from the Elder Spirit, there isn't that much replayability for this seasonal area, which barely changes over time once the seasonal quests are completed. Although I found the seasonal quests were a very fun way to play around with the camera, the results of completing these seasonal quests were very unrewarding due to the fact that nothing happened in terms of the narrative story and the cutscenes felt very repeated. Also, I'd like to mention that the camera feature on console is a bit more fiddly to use than on mobile where everything is a bit smoother. Switching between the camera modes on console is probably the most fiddly due to the fact that I have to press the camera switch button twice to get to tripod mode, which can sometimes move the camera to a weird angle, which is a bit inconvenient. However, this is quite an improvement for photography on the console editions mainly because there is a way to take sky photos without the UI getting in the way. Overall, I feel like this season encapsulates what sky is all about, connections and friendships. I think the last few seasons have focused more on narratives, which is fine and has worked for some seasons, but focusing on capturing photos and spending time with friends and family makes this season more memorable for me than the other ones which I've talked about on this list. I haven't even mentioned the events that took place during this season, including the Aurora Encore concert, where the entire community joined together to break the Guinness World Record for the largest virtual concert, which although the server stability for that was a bit of a mess, it was the best event that Sky had ever put together, and a a moment that will be cherished by everyone who attended, including me. Although not the perfect season, this has to be one of the best seasons we've had for a very long time and deserves a high ranking on this list. Gonna put this season above the season of Aurora, mainly because the amount of content that this season has is insanely good, however I don't think it is as good as Sanctuary or Dreams, just because the fact they were practically perfect seasons and the nostalgia vibes I get with them, they just hit different. Season of Revival, or as I like to call it, the Season of Avery, as this season was predominantly set in Avery. The first new realm added into the game since the release of Sky nearly five years ago. Season of Avery has been in development for an extremely long time, with the first trailer of the first look at the Avery area being released in May 2023 when Passage was out. The first Avery area was added in the early beta version of the game all the way back in 2018 when the game was originally called Sky Light Awaits. The entire premise of Avery is that the area is meant to be like a village where spirits and players hang out and is meant to be more of an upgraded version of home space. When the first trailer came out I was really interested in how the Avery area looked as it was practically a brand new realm with lots of things to do. The area, although not as big as some seasonal areas such as the Little Prince or Dreams, I I feel like the area size is just about right to make it feel like a small village. I love the little shops that they added in, with a shop to place boats, hopefully causing boat pollution to drop in Avery. Did that work? No. A hairstyle on to change the hairstyles, which is just a way to change the hairstyles that you own. Same with the capes and other outfits which are located in different areas in the village. Plus there is a new in-app Persia hall where you can see the outfits and cosmetics which you could buy. This is nice to see as there isn't an in-app Persia shop anywhere in the game apart from in the menu. All the rooms that they've added in are all super well detailed and I love the craftsmanship they put into the little details such as the masks and capes. All of these areas were unlocked by doing the seasonal quests which took place weekly instead of every two weeks, mainly because there was 10 quests rather than the normal 6 to 8 quests in a season. Over time, by completing one of these quests, something in the Avery village would be unlocked, such as the bow terrier or the hair salon. Most of these quests were quite short, but were memorable, as it felt like you were building up the entire village from a rubble, dull and infested wasteland, like Luton, to a bustling, lively and bright village like a rural settlement in the Japanese countryside. I loved the concept of the seasonal quests, as they were all structured extremely well. Quest 1 is where you visit the new area for the first time, where you guide the hopeful steward to Avery. Once you guide your way through Avery, you are then greeted to one of the spirits from Rhythm and you have the chance to change hairstyles. After completing that quest, is done and the shop is open. Second quest, you go to where the hopeful steward guides you to. You find the enchantment elder spirit who guides you to his new shop in the village. You place a boat down in an area, boom, the quest is done and the enchantment shop is open for business. Quest 3, you find some candles and place them onto a pedestal. Boom, quest done. Congratulations, you've made the Avery a little bit less British. Quest 4. F*** 
Q, you're going to Eden. Kind of weird that they made the fourth quest set around completing Eden, but at least it matches with the narrative of the season, as after completing it, boom, the realm gates are open. Quests 5 to 10 for a veteran would take about 3 seconds, because it's literally just going up to the Elder Spirits, realising you completed the quest, and then boom, the seasonal quest is completed. If you're a moth or a player who hasn't played Sky for a while, however, the entire process of completing the rest of Avery area would take you about 3 months, as you will need to complete an entirely different season to complete the quest. This was probably the worst drawback of the season in my opinion regarding these quests as it was boring for experienced players who have completed these seasons, inconvenient for players who don't play Sky for long periods of time, and horrible for new players who have to complete the entire season from square one. For me, I had a mix of two aspects. I had some quests which were completed in 3 seconds due to me completing the seasons in the past, mostly old seasons such as Enchantment or Dreams, however I did not complete the entirety of some of the boring seasons such as Flight or Performance or Passage, which I went on to complete to unlock the rest of the Avery Village. Personally, I can justify why TGC decided to go down this route as the seasons will help build the Avery Village. An example of this is when completing Performance, you unlock the entrance to Harmony Hall. Completing Passage unlocks a Mask Wardrobe, or Completing Flight unlocks a Cape Wardrobe. I like how each seasonal Elder Spirit brings more purpose and life into the village. Now, I don't think this is fully perfect, however. Mainly, the portal to Harmony Hall just sends you to the place in Hermit Village and Valley with no way back to Avery unless you set the place as your home space, which is personally fine, but I would have liked to seen the game send me to a retextured version of Harmony Hall inside the Avery Village instead of the game just sending me to the Dreams Hermit Village area of Harmony Hall. A couple of other things which I did not fully like about this season include there being completely no new emotes, which sucked as normally when new seasons come out, I'm most interested in the emotes. There were four cosmetic trees which were available to buy from, which I thought were quite overpriced and lacked a lot of the cosmetics that I was interested in. I liked a couple of the cape and hair designs, mainly from the vestige of a desert oasis and the memory of a lost village spirit trees, but apart from the spirits with the really long names, there isn't much to talk about apart from these things. Overall, I think one of the most highly anticipated seasons that we've ever had did live up to the expectation that we got. Although nowhere near my favourite season, I feel like it did have a lot of things right. The quests, although feeling sometimes repetitive and being a mix of super easy and quick to having to complete Eden and other seasons, felt refreshing and unique to the other seasons which we had before where the narrators were either decent, mid or just downright horrible and depressing. That game company have been working on this season for a very long time now and there are still bits of the Avery area that still need to be added in. I expect this place to become an extremely vibrant area with events taking place there, such as with the fireworks event which was ruined a little bit by festival tech, but I expect so much more stuff to be added in over time and this season is definitely one of, if not the season with the most amount of replayability value. On the ranking list, I definitely see it being around the same level as Prophecy, mainly because both seasons brought something new to the table. However, I don't think it is as good as Dreams, Aurora or Sanctuary, mainly because as an actual season with cosmetics and emotes, this season lacked in those departments but it did make up with one of the best narrative storytellings we have seen in any season that we've ever had. And finally, we have the most recent season from this list, Season of Nine Coloured Deer. This is the latest season to be released from when this video is being made, and I have written this segment in mid-February, which is a couple weeks after the release. So I do have a bit more opinions about this season than if I was to make this video in January. Um, I think the first thing when I heard about this next collab season being Nine Coloured Deer, I had one question. What on earth is a nine coloured deer? Well, for people who don't know, this season is based around the nine coloured deer animation short film made in 1981. However, the actual origins of the story traces all the way back to the Deer King Jakarta painting in the 257th cave of the Mogal Grottoes, a huge cave system built in the Wei Dynasty which was built over 1700 years ago. The story is heavily influenced by Buddhism as the Buddha himself's previous life was the Deer King who saved a man only for him to return the favour by betraying him. The story which got adapted into an animated short film follows the same principles as the original story. In a nutshell, the Deer King saves some animals and finds some merchants who got a bit lost, rumours spread around about the nine coloured deer in a village, man who sells drugs falls into water, gets saved by nine coloured deer from drowning and is told to not tell about their whereabouts. What does the drug dealer do? 
He tells the queen he wants to turn the nine coloured deer into a stone island coat with the nine coloured deer's fur. This leads to the king putting up a bounty for the deer to be hunted down. The king hires the merchant as part of his plan to distract the deer from the hunters. The drug dealer merchant finds the deer and attempts to fall into the water pretending to drown to catch the deer's attention again. The hunters then appear and start firing arrows at the deer, however a deer puts a spell on them, Thanos snapping their arrows and turning them into dust. Then some bird attacks the merchant who ends up drowning and the hunters give up as the deer runs off into the distance. The entire short film is available now to watch on YouTube with English subtitles which I will link in the description down below. So after looking through the entire story of the Nine Coloured Deer which is basically just a summary of the Wikipedia article, I was wondering how on earth would this be adapted into Sky? First of all, I would like to talk about the area that this is located in. When entering the area for the first time, you enter the first cutscene and straight into the story of the Nine Coloured Deer. Then you get to this massive hallway surrounded by Darkness and Krills who are more aggressive than my GCSE maths teacher who I ended up throwing a calculator at. Don't try that by the way, I got put into isolation for all of our lessons for an entire month. After that, you are then greeted with the large seasonal area and the first quest being completed where you can first roam around the seasonal area, which I liked how they adapted the setting. The entire pink sand colour scheme resembles the third level in journey, there is a large pond, the nine coloured deer in spirit form, the seasonal elder, wall paintings, an entire crater with a temple, throne room and a cave. This area has so much to offer and I don't even think I've explored all of it yet and it already gives me a great first impression about this season. I'm already quite interested to see how TGC will adapt the original story into this season as it doesn't really follow the ethics and values of Sky. I guess the goodness of people getting rewarded and the evil getting punished could classify as that, however punishment doesn't really follow the ethics of Sky apart from getting krilled so it would be interesting to see how that is implemented into Sky. Other aspects about this season included the emotes which were quite good, these included some muscle flex emote for your Sky Kid Sigma edit, the daydream emote which is one of my favourite new emotes from the past year, a brand new friendship carry emote which looks adorable however is stupidly overpriced, and finally... Yeah, they added the whistle emotes which Josh Hutcherson would absolutely die for. The cosmetics, however, I kinda have mixed opinions about, but I do like the hunter and merchant's hairstyles, the feudal lord's cape, and the ultimate reward cape, which I love how it looks different from any other capes we've gotten in Sky. Overall, I think this season does have a lot of potential. Again, this season is still ongoing, and only two of the seasonal quests are able to be completed from when this script is being written. However, there is so much stuff to do anyway from the large seasonal area, to try and tame the cosmetics. Out of everything that Sky could have collabed with for a season, I definitely did not expect Nine Coloured Deer to be one of them, especially because I had not heard of it until about last month. Also, I would like to mention on the Wikipedia article under the See Also section, it talks about Princess Monocone, one of the best films made by Studio Ghibli. This is the closest thing we're getting to a Studio Ghibli collab, isn't it, huh? I would rank this season around the same area as the Little Prince season, as I feel like there is a lot of similarities between the two. I don't think this season breaks into a top 5 though, as this is definitely a very unconventional season. Okay, so finally we have talked about all of the seasons which I did not mention in the last video. So now I'm going to try and rank them all again and see where they all go in their places. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the survey which I did, which I sent out to you guys through the YouTube community page and also on the Studio Chibi Discord server. So um, first of all, I'm going to talk about the results of these. So out of these seasons, which one was your favourite? And you guys had voted for Passage as the favourite season, with 33% of you saying that Passage was your favourite season. I can understand why you guys liked it. Um, I think it was also a, a pretty good season. It was just kind of completely ruined by Festival Tech. So I, I do see the, I do understand why Passage you guys might have liked um a lot of, i think second place was nine colored deer with 22 percent and also remembrance with 22 percent i don't know why you guys like remembrance because it was completely depressing but uh sure <laughs> fine for the least favorite sky season uh 44 percent of you went for moments why this season was fine like it was brilliant wait this season was like 10 times better than remembrance why did you guys hate this so much like 
Oh my goodness, okay. Um, well, uh, you guys did not like, uh, moments then. I liked moments mainly because of the camera, so there is a little bit of bias. Season of Remembrance, where you guys have majority voted for two out of five, which is understandable. It was a pretty bad season. Passage, the majority of you guys said four out of five. Um, which is kind of normal, I'd say. I think most of you guys said Passage was your favorite season, so uh, understandable. Moments, uh, there's kind of a 50-50, really, between some of you really liking it, so 33% of you uh, put down as a 4 out of 5, and then some of you put it down as a 2 out of 5, which is very mixed opinions with moments. I think a lot of the opinions on this list at the moment from looks of it have been um kind of mixed opinions so that that kind of makes a lot more sense i can kind of understand because like the season itself was mainly about the camera and the narrative wasn't very strong so i think i can kind of understand why people might have put it as a two it was one of my favorite seasons because just it was amazing and the camera feature was brilliant where would you rank the season of revival um, you guys put it down as mid, 44% of you put it down as mid, 33% uh, of you put it down as a 4. Out of 5, where would you rank the season of 9 Coloured Deer? A lot of you guys actually liked it, wow, okay, so a lot of you put 5 stars, 5, 33% of you put it down as a 5 out of 5, which is really surprising. Half of you have said it was really good, and half of you said it was absolutely terrible, so... Uh, the kind of mixed reviews on that one, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, I can kind of see why it's like 50-50. Okay, so now finally for the moment of truth. Ranking all the Sky Seasons right here, right now. This video's already gone on for about 30 minutes, but uh, I'm going to quickly just go through the entire new Seasons ranked list. So there's about 20 Seasons now in Sky. I'm going to rank them all right now, and uh, I'm just going to quickly explain a little bit about why I've put them in their certain places. Uh, just very quickly, just in a couple sentences, because I've already waffled for quite a lot, and the other seasons you can go into explanation about why I've put them in their places in either this video or the last video. So yeah, go watch them both as you will get a lot more context. So in 20th place, I've put in Season of Shattering. Again, what the hell was this season? There was basically no content, it was just the shard quests, and that was it. That was all I remember. It was just the shard quests, it was completely depressing, the cosmetics were boring, the entire theme and the premise of the actual season was boring. It didn't even feel like a season, it just felt like an update. All you get is just some more ascended candles just from not doing Eden. That That's literally it. That, that's all there is to this season. Nothing else. Um, in 19th, we've got Season of Remembrance. Um, again, as I've already said, I did not like this season at all. It was one of the worst seasons that I've ever seen Sky produce, mainly because it was just a nothing. It was very depressing. It was no replayability value, completely depressing, completely boring. It was different, but it was it was not really a season that I would actually remember very fondly. Okay, so in 18th, we've got Season of Performance. I have switched around Performance and Flight. After thinking for it now, I think Performance is a little bit worse, mainly because literally all there is about this season for me is Harmony Hall. Um, even then, it's kind of, there's still not really much to do. I do like the cosmetics, yes, but I, it, the story itself wasn't particularly that um, engaging for me and the area was kind of boring. But it was nice to see like a little theatre stadium in Hermit Village, which is kind of cute. But I, I, I personally didn't think this season was as good as Flight, which season of Flight takes 17th spot. Originally, uh, when I actually ranked this in the first video, I got a lot of hate because I put Flight so low down. And after completing the entire season, because I was basically just forced to do it by the season of Revival to complete their quest. Um, I don't think it is as bad as what I remember putting it, so I can kind of see why you guys might like it. The wind paths are quite convenient, even though I barely use them because I have no idea how to navigate around them, um, but I still think this was actually quite better than performance because it has some sort of replayability value apart from performance that there wasn't that much apart from Harmony Hall. Okay, so in 
16th, I put in Season of Belonging. Again, this is an OG season, so there isn't that much going for it, but the cosmetics are brilliant and I absolutely love them. There's just not that much apart from the cosmetics and the spirits and the emotes, but you do kind of get that with those OG seasons because there isn't really a seasonal area with narratives and stories and like lore. So you kind of get that with the OG seasons. Again, with the same thing with 15th place, which is Light Seekers. Um, and that is also kind of the same thing, but I think the capes were brilliant. The designs were absolutely amazing. I love them. I still wear them from time to time and they're also extremely iconic. In 14th place, we have Season of Assembly. I really like this season. It was quite a cute concept. There is quite a bit of replayability value, mainly done from the daily quests, which is quite nice to see. I do love the entire theme of the Assembly season. It's very cute. 13th place we have Season of Abyss. I have dropped this a couple of places I believe, mainly just to fit in the new seasons around it. I actually think Abyss wasn't particularly amazing. I like the option of having to swim now. There's a brand new mechanic, but that makes it go a couple places up. I do think the story is quite good and I do think the cosmetics are okay. I just don't think it's the most like groundbreaking season that you'll ever see. In 12th, we have the Season of Passage which is one of the seasons that I have talked about on this video. I do think Festival Tech ruins it, lots of glitches. As a season, it was pretty good. It was definitely better than Abyss, definitely better than Assembly. Now we have two OG seasons in 11th and 10th, as I put Rhythm in 11th and 10th, I put Gratitude. In 11th place, I've put Rhythm, mainly because the cosmetics and the emotes were quite good, but Gratitude definitely has the more iconic masks and capes and it was just kind of a better season I thought. Also it's the first season of Sky so it definitely left a very good first impression on how Sky seasons were made. I don't really have a lot to talk about for both seasons but Rhythm I do like the emotes more but Gratitude I do love the cosmetics more so it was kind of a 50-50 between these two. They're kind of very similar to each other but I just think Gratitude has the better masks and cosmetics. In ninth we have the season of the Little Prince Again, this has a really good story, mainly because it's an adapted story from the original book. Um, I love how they adapted the seasonal area. It's probably one of my favorites in the entire game. I love the lighting that they've done for it. The story is all right, even though I don't like the flower. I still don't. I've learned to not trust video game flowers from Undertale. In eighth place, we have Season of the Nine Colored Deer. Again, I still think this is very similar to the Little Prince season. Very good area, very good adapted story. Kind of mixed with the cosmetics, but they do have some really good emotes. And I think this season, if done well, could move up further on the list when the entire story and the season is completed. In seventh place, we have the Season of Enchantment. Now, some people may think that this season is kind of mid but it is the first season to have a large seasonal area and a seasonal area in all it's the first season that we've actually had a brand new area in sky so it is very important in the skies in sixth place we have the season of revival again season of avery i love the area i love the detail that's been put into this season i love how the quests build up the area of avery as it feels like you're building up a world the cosmetics are not as good and there's no emotes which sucks but I still thought it was a pretty good season overall as it was something a little bit different unlike Shattering where it was just completely a nothing. This actually has something worth of value. In fifth place we have Season of Prophecy. Now I think some of you guys probably know this for the extremely painful trial quests but I think this was one of the most unique things Sky has ever done. I hope something like this will return again in Sky mainly because it has so much replayability value and it also allows for more veteran and skilled players to have some sort of challenge in the game. I do love to see more of these puzzles get added into Sky as they were super fun. Although they were a little bit painful, it did add some challenge to Sky. In fourth place, we have Season of Aurora. Now, 
I have ranked this a couple places down, mainly because I thought the two seasons above it are better than the season of Aurora, thinking of it now, mainly because they added something completely brand new, the narrative was brilliant, or they had just some nostalgia vibe to them. I still think it was amazing, the concert was brilliant, but again, the encore concerts were like 10 times better in some shape or form, and uh, this season was still kind of amazing, and it was kind of breaking the boundaries of Sky. It, it was still a fun season, but I don't think it was as good as the three seasons above. First, second, third, and fourth places, they're all kind of like the goats of Sky season. So take this with a grain of salt as you will, just because I just thought this season wasn't as good as the top three. In third place, we have Season of Moments. Now, this is probably going to get me sued because like most of you guys on the um, survey did not like this season. The camera feature makes it go up about 12 places because I am a Sky YouTuber and the camera feature is the best thing that Sky have added in since sliced bread. Okay, yes, there were some bits that I did not like about this season, the over-repetitiveness of the quests, this narrative of the season not being as good as other seasons, such as Aurora or Prophecy or Revival. But again, the seasonal area does make it go up quite a lot of places, and the entire season being set in Prairie just makes it go up another, like, five places. So, yeah, I do have a little bit of bias to this season. The camera, the seasonal area, the amazing emotes, the cosmetics were also amazing. Literally, most of the stuff in the season was absolutely brilliant. There was just a couple things that didn't make it completely perfect for this season. In second place, now I have put this season a couple places up from the original ranking video and that is the Season of Dreams. This season probably has some of the best cosmetics you can find in any season. I love the all the capes, I love the masks, I love the outfits. They're just so cool man. The area itself probably makes it also go above at least a couple places because it's one of the best areas in the entire game. I love the orange lighting, I love the kind of sauna area that they added in. It's at the top of the hills. It's kind of used for quests quite often. You might have seen it before. Um, there's kind of a football area now where you can just play soccer in the, well, football. It's not called soccer, isn't it? For goodness sake, Americans. And then if you go up the mountain, there is the, I think it's the Hermit Mountain or whatever it's called, um, where you can find one of the most picturesque spots in the entire game, which is the Hermit Valley Sunset, which looks absolutely beautiful. However, there's normally like five players sitting there so it is very photogenic but uh, at the same time it's also a very crowded spot from time to time it's one of the best places to go to for a chill spot in sky it's absolutely beautiful the air is amazing cosmetics are amazing yeah it's just amazing and finally at number one we have season of sanctuary the crown has not been toppled from the goated season an amazing area amazing cosmetics the best area in the game the golden era of sky was around this time best nostalgia like if you're thinking of sky nostalgia this is the season not abyss not little prince not flight this is the proper golden age of sky children delight if you say otherwise you're wrong. It has the best cosmetics, the best emotes, the best of everything. It is the goat. Do not at me and uh yeah and that is all of the Sky Seasons ranked in Sky Children of the Light. My goodness, that was long. Yep, I have made a 40 minute video of me waffling about Sky Seasons. And I thought the 30 minute video of the first one was long. This is longer. However, I want to know what is your favourite season? What season you hate the most? What season do you think is mid? Do you think my opinions are horrible? What do you think of this entire video? If there's any opinions you have on the seasons, let me know in the comments down below. Write a paragraph, write a a couple sentences, do whatever, like the video, subscribe. We're nearly at 2k subscribers. Please subscribe. That would help me out so much. There might be another one of these next year, maybe. I don't know. Just kind of depends on like my whole schedule and stuff. I am quite busy at the moment, so uh, getting this video up will be quite painful as it's a 40 minute long video. I really appreciate the support and the love you guys have given for this entire project. Uh, it's extremely long and uh, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.